What if you were told that you had to build from scratch a company that would one day be a multi-billion dollar company and on top of that you were told that you could not work one day of every week. You had to take a break every one day of every week while all of your competitors worked their butts off to beat you during that one day every week, every seven days where you could not work. Do you think you would succeed? Well, that's exactly what this man did. S. Truett Cathy. And he actually wrote a book on how he did it and how to succeed. And now he's passed away, but he was worth over $2 billion when he died. And he founded and created one of my favorite fast food companies, Chick-fil-A. It is a company that so many people love. They know so well. They love going there. They're always going there. And it's ingrained into our culture. If you're not familiar with this restaurant, it's very peculiar uh, for a number of reasons. One is that uh, their whole motto is that they will not sell beef. Uh, the second is that they always close on Sundays, which is very peculiar because they are a top fast food chain, particularly in the U.S. They have over 2,000 uh, restaurants within the U.S. Um, and their highest density is within the southeast regions of the U.S. And what's peculiar about that is that if you walk into a food court or any chain of fast food restaurants, every single store, McDonald's, Burger King, all the big players are there open on Sundays, except for Chick-fil-A, which is still closed on Sundays, despite being a multi-billion dollar company. And they probably lose a lot of money because they don't operate like all the other fast food chains 24 seven. Yet, I'm sure, you know, they still make some of it back in terms of goodwill. And this is one of those books that I think is, uh, it's a bit of a tragedy that no one reads it. You know, there's so many books by billionaires and um, some of them don't really talk about success or give you advice. They're more so just giving you their life story. Um, but this one does. And it's such a shame that no one knows about it. No one who knows about it bothers to read it. And most people who care about this stuff in the personal development or business or entrepreneurial space, they will know about common books like 4-Hour Work Week or E-Myth Revisited or whatever else, Getting Things Done, uh, Good to Great, blah, blah, blah. There's a million... Uh, very well-known business books uh, by Seth Godin or whoever else who you know started and sold a million dollar tech business during the height of the internet bubble. Now I'm not saying that Seth Godin who did just that or Tim Ferriss who did something similar with his uh, pill company are not successful and, or shouldn't be giving advice. But it's such a shame that 99% uh, of the people who seek advice on this uh, read only those books and don't read books like this I mean his the advice in this book is just timeless uh, business and personal development advice beyond just business it's just incredible advice on just improving your life and I finally picked it up uh, it's not well marketed like those other books because he wrote this just to help people he didn't write this to make money he didn't make this book a business book and uh, that's oftentimes what happens uh, a lot of these books are businesses in of them in it of themselves they're marketed they will be they will lose money trying to sell you this book in order to get you in the door and this guy you can just tell uh, he made a ton of incredible connections with some of the most influential businesses of this day he has testimonials back here from Real businesses you can trust. Delta Airlines CEO, uh, chairman of board of Bell South Corporation. Uh, the forward is written by the president of the Coca-Cola Company. These are high players. And uh, this man, uh, let me just give you a few uh, things I picked up from this book that will be really useful to you. First off, he's a very religious guy and he's not afraid to share that in this book. And that's why he closes on Sundays. 
because uh, according to his religion, he doesn't. Second thing is he believes that success is easier than failure. It's something that the personal development guru Brian Tracy says a lot. And Brian Tracy says that it costs a lot more to be broke and in pain than it is to get rich. And he says a lot of similar stuff in this book about how it's actually easier to succeed because failure costs too much on your reputation. Failure means that uh, you have to try even harder to get to that success. Failure means that you still have to spend more money to get to the success that you're at. And it was a topic that, that I didn't really understand, but and it was really peculiar to me, but uh, he really explains it and really uh, goes into why success is easier than failure. And here's another incredible tip that I learned from this book. He emphasizes something that uh, uh, the uh, billionaire Charlie Munger also mentions a lot, which is that um, you can learn from your own failures, but you can get to success a lot quicker by learning from other people's failures. And um, he said he calls it uh, the shortcut to success. So that's one of the reasons I read books uh, because I mean these people they've learned a lot of lessons through you know building a billion dollar company and they have a lot to share and if we never learn from history history simply will repeat or do something very similar and that's the tragedy of the world 90% of the world don't uh, you know look at the mistakes of their ancestors and they just repeat and repeat and repeat what's going on um, and fortunately we have that 10% who are smart enough to record uh, the tragedies that occurred, whether it was the Holocaust, whether it was what happened with Hitler, whether it was um, common, stupid, yet uh, simple to fix business mistakes uh, that are timeless, like just hiring an honest accountant that could save you so much time and money, but no one bothers to really read. So that's just, just another golden nugget. Here's another great one. Uh, you have to take action and do it. And I think that's a huge point. I know of a few people on the internet who have uh, similar hobbies like me. And they've read uh, just as much business books as I have, uh, just as much personal development books. Yeah, you could just tell that their life is a mess. They're not making a lot of money. They're just like co floating around just reading the, these for fun. And... Napoleon Hill said it best. He said that knowledge alone is not power. If you never take that and apply it and actually do something with it, you're just that person sitting in your basement uh, with all this like knowledge about uh, business or successful billionaires that you'll never use. And you can, ha you can have all these answers or all these ideas, but if you just let them sit there, you're just going to, to the outside world and to yourself, you're no better off than that guy who didn't read or learn about that stuff anyways because you didn't apply it. So he makes a great point with that. Another one is that you have to really want to succeed and commit to succeeding. It sounds cliche, but what he really means, and he goes into detail here, is that you really have to focus down and commit. And he did this by uh, sometimes only sleeping a few hours and working 36-hour shifts. And... That really exemplifies commitment. Like you can't just be wishy-washy about it. Let's say, for example, I really wanted to uh, be successful on YouTube. I couldn't. I can't do what most other people do, which is say they commit, but then you you catch them six months later and they post one video that's uh, mediocre at best, and they don't post again for another four months. It's inconsistent, and they haven't really uh, committed to really putting their full effort into it. You can't do that. And then the final thing I learned is uh, you have to develop know-how. And that's not, these aren't the only things I learned from this book. There's so much more. Uh, and what he means by develop know-how is that you really have to study and know every single thing about whether it's your industry, your market, or your skill set. Uh, and he calls it uh, your the projected market. He says you have to develop, develop skills, prepare yourself physically, mentally, and intellectually through formal education and putting in um, everything you have. He says 
Merely putting in time and energy isn't enough. You have to study your market. And I think that brings up an incredible point. Um, just by putting in time and energy into a project, um, that's what most people do. They go to their job nine to five and they do it. And uh, David Ogilvy, he really said this really well. Um, he is the, uh, a lot of people call him the father of advertising and he grew his advertising agency from nothing to a business that uh, build billions of dollars every year. And the point is that uh, I was reading, just skimming his book, I didn't read the whole thing, but he said in one part of his book that um, what made him succeed and what he recommends anyone who wants to get into the same industry is that on the weekends, while everyone else is just fooling around, you study and research every single possible thing about your industry. And then he gives the example of the gas industry. He said he even told you to, he said like wake up early on Saturday and Sunday and go to the gas station and just quiz all the truckers there uh, and learn as much as you can about gasoline as it relates to trucking. And uh, I mean, that's a lot of work, but um, that can really get you ahead because if you know every single in and out of your industry, there's no possible scenario that you're unprepared for or um, that can really like uh, bankrupt you. You know about possible competitors and so forth. And uh, the truth is a lot of people are way too lazy to do this and they'll say they're doing it, but um, it's tough to do because that takes a lot of work and most people are lazy and they don't want to do that because it's not interesting to them. So this book is incredible. It's a rarity. You can't find this book at your local library usually. Uh, but I did pick it up on Amazon for very cheap. And it's such a gem. This is one of those examples of books that cost as much as a coffee or a burger or a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Yet is probably worth a thousand times more. This book can literally, you know, change your life. And uh, I really recommend it. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out more details about this book, pick it up on Amazon, which I think is the most efficient and easiest way to get this book for cheap and have it delivered to your doorstep. Uh, that's how I got it. Again, a great book. And the most amazing part is that this guy didn't just write one book on this topic. He ended up writing numerous books. This $2 billion man, he wrote numerous books on this topic. Another one of his books is titled, um, How Did You Do It, True It? And this one's titled, It's Easier to Succeed Than to Fail. So the point is, get out there and do it. And, you know, I can only do so much convincing. And at some point, if I can't convince you, then um, either way I win because I think it's just so useful that since no one else is interested enough, uh, no one else is, uh, you know, can overcome that laziness, I get ahead of everyone else, my competitors, wh whoever else, because I've read this and no one else has. And I have all this, uh, you know, all this incredible insights from this man I've never met in person but uh, you know he's willing to help me and um, I mean just think about it do you want to read a book do you want to get advice from just some random guy who made his first million dollars uh, which is nothing to laugh about or do you want advice from this man who's had decades upon decades of business experience and has all this advice who has created one of the most honorable respected brands Chick-fil-A and made billions along the process uh, for such a slow price. Uh, so I really think uh, it's such a blessing for me to have this. Um, and yeah, if you don't read it, I will. You can bet on that. And I will get ahead because, you know, I'm going to have this knowledge and you won't. So check it out. I highly encourage you to read it. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, one last thing I want, want, do have to say, uh, Chick-fil-A is just an awesome restaurant. Uh, I, am, I have a little story for you. Uh, I would go there all the time 
and there was a phase where that was all I went to and it was a time when money was tight but uh, I just wanted something new in my life, some spice, and uh, I was just sick of the same old food. And so I would always go there, and uh, one thing that uh, I remember some of my friends and classmates always talking about was just how awesome their sauces were. And there's some sauces, um, I didn't even know about it, but I really started getting into the sauces. And there's they literally have all these different types of sauces. Polynesian, Chick-fil-A sauce, hot sauce, and so forth. And um, I remember just going there like at least once every week and just sitting there and eating these sandwiches one after the other. I could eat and just trying these different sauces out. And it was just an amazing time. Um, and back then, I had no interest in personal development or business. I just loved the restaurant. And it's just interesting how the tables have turned. This guy recently died, and I'm sure he lived a great life. Uh, very interesting dude. And uh, what can I say? It's it's a restaurant that's it's very eerie because um, it's one thing seeing a restaurant with all these friendly people. Uh, it, it just seems so standard and nonchalant because you see it every day. You see the employees that work there every day. It's just a like, common restaurant yet you know respected uh i could hire, i could probably apply and work there too and yet when you look at it from a different lens through the business lens very similar to mcdonald's and uh, ray Kroc's book grinding it out you really see it from a different perspective and you're just like wow it's not just some corporate entity like this man built this from scratch with his bare, bare hands and uh what a story that is um Thanks so much for watching this and don't let it end here. There's plenty of other incredible stories. I've done videos on a Ray Kroc story. Uh, really check those out because that's also incredible. And thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you watch till the end, please leave a comment because you guys who watch to the end are the ones who really care about this and really uh, want to learn more. And aren't like 99% of the people on YouTube who have short attention spans. So leave a comment letting me know that you watched till the end. And uh, any constructive feedback, you know, polite, positive, uh, but constructive feedback on what you would have liked better. Um, and I will take your feedback into account. If there's something uh, you wanted me to say, if you perhaps wanted me to talk more about this book, tell me. If you wanted me to do a top 10 list of what I learned from this book, tell me. What type of videos do you like and how do you want me to do this? Thanks for watching and uh, I couldn't help but make this because this is just an exciting time having this book here. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.